Hello artists. Today we are going to talk about monochromatic color schemes. And so let's write that down on our next blank page in our journal. Um, you might actually want to put it flat so that it doesn't bleed through. I'm using a ultra fine Sharpie. monochromatic color scheme and a monochromatic color scheme um, comes the the name monochromatic is um, actually two words put together so we have the word mono and then we have the word chromatic so mono means one let's go ahead and write that down And chromatic means color. So that's what monochromatic means. One color plus something. One color plus its tints, tones, and shades. And a tint, we're going to define a tint, a tone, and a shade. Okay, so put those there. I zoomed in a bit. Um, tint means color plus white. And I know that that's a little confusing because when we tint our windows in our car, they're darker, but um, in art, that word tint means color plus white. Tone means color plus gray. And shade, think about like going in the shade of a tree on a sunny day, means color plus black. So tints are lighter, shades are darker. And we are going to make a value scale. Okay, and we've talked about value before, but a value scale, which is organizing values. from light to dark. And so we're going to do that today. Um, you can pause the video if you need to get these notes, but I am going to move on in the video. All right, so I have my um, journal here I zoomed out and I'd like you to draw five circles all about the same size and um, you could use like the inside of a tape thing um, you could use a small cup but I want them to overlap so I want to show you here look like this here's one circle and then I want to overlap just a little bit. Circle two. They don't need to touch. Leave some space in between here. Circle three. Circle four. Circle five. 
Let's go ahead and do that. Pause the video and then come on back. So now we're going to just number these. One, two, three, four, five. And the middle one here is three, right? So that's the middle. Um, we uh, were given our um, in our kit some paint. Some of you have blue uh, and black and white, and some of you have red and black and white, I believe, or maybe magenta. Um, also in your kit was, this is palette paper, um, and it's actually two pieces of paper. But if you're at home and you don't have palette paper, you can just use like a lid. This is like a lid from a sour cream container or a lid from um, yogurt, some sort of plastic packaging. So I'm just going to use one of these palette papers. I'm going to use this paint. So get that out. You're going to need a brush and I find it's easier if you use a flat brush. So a brush that has a flat tip there. Um, you're going to need some water, some paper towels. Okay, so get all of your supplies and come back and we'll start painting and mixing monochromatic colors. All right, so I'm going to start with my colors here. I'm just going to take them out of the kit. They should be um, still sealed. I put some plastic wrap and stuff. Shake them up a little bit. Put your hand on it though. You don't want these to go everywhere. Um, they are um, something that will stain your clothes. Okay, and this is the um, paint we're going to also use for our painting that we're going to do later. So you want to take care of this, meaning you want to put the lids back on. You want to um, seal it up really well and keep it airtight. I'm just cutting the tape so we can get to these. Okay. So um, we're going to start with tints and I have my palette paper here and <clears throat> get some of my color out. My color has separated because I gave this to you guys for um, a couple months ago. So that's okay. You're just going to take your brush um, and, and you're going to mix it on up. Okay, so it's actually good. It happened here on the tutorial so that you can see I just mix it up. Mix, 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 mix. So you're going to mix your paints. It's good to mix them even if it didn't separate. I noticed the blue separates a lot. I'm not sure about the other colors. You don't want this paint all up in here, so I'm going to take some paint, put a nice blob there down on my palette paper. We're not going to use that much. So like maybe a chocolate chip, no, no, not a chocolate chip size, um, a um, like a Hershey Kiss size. Okay, and then I'm going to put, this is kind of a type of saran wrap here. I'm just going to put it back on and push it down on to keep it nice and secure. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to start with white. Let me clean my brush. So do this along with me. Make sure your brush is clean and dry. Um, this is acrylic paint and it doesn't need the water. It's, water is not its friend. So I just kind of squeeze it between some paper towel here. Um, if you're working at home, you might want to protect your desk area because look, I'm already starting to get some paint here and it won't come off. It'll stain. Okay, I have, this is not real wood. It's just protecting my surface. So that's good for me. Okay, I'm going to get my white here and mix it up a little. And you don't want to put the white right in. You want to put the white somewhere else. So I'm just going to put it over here. Okay, when we're mixing paint, you always want to have some of the pure color separated out. I'll have to fix that a little later, but I'm going to put on my lid. These lids should keep it somewhat airtight. Okay. 
clean and dry your brush and then get ready to paint. So go ahead and do that. Oh, my brush is the, or my water is the most beautiful color. Um, go ahead and get your paint out. And we'll pause the video until everybody's got that done. Come back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back here. Um, we pointed out number three. Number three is going to be just this pure um, blue. And number one and two are going to be tints on this side. And number four and five are going to be shades. So first we're going to mix a really light blue and then it's going to have a little bit less white and then it's going to be the regular paint without white or black in it and then it's going to, we're going to add a little bit of black to the paint and a little bit of white. So I'm going to talk you through all of that um, and where the, they overlap and stuff I'm going to show you what to do. So what you want to do is you want to take um, some paint and make a new little spot and then you want to clean your brush. You always want to clean your brush before you go back in. So there's a lot of cleaning of brushes. Okay, and most artists find it helpful if you're painting, just have something like a paper towel in your hand to squeeze out the water, gently squeeze. Okay, all right. Then you're going to add a little bit of blue because we want this to be a very light blue. So when I say a little bit of blue, I mean like that much. That is like, I don't know what size that is. Itty bitty. You can always add more blue. Okay, so we're going to mix it up in here. We're making a very light blue. Try not to mix it, try not to spread it out. Like when you're mixing, kind of put your brush towards the center so it doesn't spread out as much. Um, and you want to mix it till it's completely mixed. It's all one new color. And then you're going to paint it in the whole circle of number one. And try to be somewhat careful. Go around those edges. This is kind of practice with not only mixing colors, but painting with your brush. You want to have a nice smooth edge here. and full color. It'll dry pretty quickly because we're painting on paper. So go ahead, once it's dry, and give it a second coat. And you should get to the point where you're covering up that Sharpie, but you can still kind of see it a little bit. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and I'll come back when you're done. Okay, and our next step is we're going to keep this here. This is great paint we can still use. Clean my brush, dry my brush, should be totally dry. Um, and then uh, we're going to pick up some more paint, maybe a little bit more than last time. Okay, so we want it to still be a light blue. We're just going to add it to that light blue. It's not full strength blue. It has still has that white in there. I'm mixing it until all of the color is one color, homogeneous color. Kind of getting off the extra amounts on the side here, kind of tapping it off. Okay, and then I'm going to paint in the full circle of number two and it's going to go over number one. So go ahead and try this. You can see that it should be visibly darker than um, number one. Visibly more bluer is what I should say. It's technically not darker. It's more bluer. It's more intense color. Okay, go right over that one. Let it dry for a minute or two. Make sure it's solid color. And then you can go back with another um, coat. 
So two coats. Okay, so I'm cleaning and drying my brush now. And we're done with this paint here. So don't go back into that paint. Um, number three, remember, is just this color here. And I can tell I have a little bit of water in my brush. Really try to get all that water out. It's water and, um, and I'm kind of mixing it here. Remember, my blue was kind of separated. So I'm just trying to get it a nice consistency to paint. Okay, um, and I'm going to paint right in that three circle going right over the part that the two overlaps. Let's go right on top. And what you'll notice is the paint that's just the paint without the white in it is not as opaque, meaning it's kind of see-through. So when you use just paint like this right out of the bottle, the paint we have at least, it is not opaque. And so you're going to probably have to do two or three coats. You're going to let it dry. Well, probably three or four, actually. You're going to let it fully dry. Okay, if you're at home, you could blow on it. <sighs> Mine's pretty dry here um, because I um, have, we're working on paper. Um, if you're at school with a mask on, don't blow on it. Don't take your mask off. Let it dry and then go over with another coat and do that several times until you get a solid color that's not see-through. Um, it takes some time. Okay, so there was three coats. Mine did it in three coats with fully dry in between. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush again. This is really important cleaning and really drying that brush. Okay, now we're going to get out our black and um, as we're opening it up, I just want to tell you black a little goes a long way, like a lot. So black is really strong. Um, so we're just going to take some black here and make a new little area somewhere over here and then put the lid back on. If yours was separated, don't forget to um, Stir it up. Mine was just fine. Okay. Clean and dry that brush. And if the if it starts to get paint up here, wipe off that paint up there. Okay, and really dry that brush. Okay, so we're gonna start adding black to our paint, um, to our blue. We're going to do it little bits at a time. So I'm going to take some, scoop some blue up here and make a new pile. Puddle, pile, whatever. Clean my brush. Dry my brush. And like I said, a little blue, black goes a long way. So a small amount of black on the tip of my brush. That's actually a lot. Maybe I'll wipe some off here. You can just wipe some off. And because you can always add more. I'm putting some black in here. Our goal is to make it slightly darker. And if it's not dark enough, we're going to make it darker twice. So don't make it super dark this first time. Get some more paint here. Here we go. I might have made mine a little dark. So if you make yours a, a little too dark, okay, this first time, that's okay. Before you do anything, before you paint it on there, clean your brush again. I warned you, it would be lots of cleaning of brushes. And scoop up some more blue and mix it in there. Okay, there, that's better. Really mix it together. It's a really beautiful color, this a little bit of black with this blue. It's really nice. Okay, this blue, this black um, is a very nice black. I think it's called Mars Black. Okay, then we're going to paint it in circle number four, right over the part that it overlaps with circle number three.
and I'm going to do a second coat here in just a minute. I'm going to let that soak in just a little bit darker. Paint on a second coat. You'll notice I'm trying not to show my brush strokes, so I'm trying to blend it all in. So it's nice and even. And that's what I'm going to be expecting when we do our actual painting. Okay? Great. So go ahead and do that. I'll pause the video and then we can come back. Okay. So cleaning my brush again. I still have some of my blue and black down here that I did for number four. And now I'm going to add a little bit more black. But remember, black is strong. So you know, tap some off because you can always add some more. And we're just trying to get a darker blue, but definitely not black. So I'm not sure about what it looks like on the video on the camera here, but in person it is um, a really nice, yeah, it looks just black there, on, but it is a really nice dark blue. And so I'm going to use this color on circle number five. It should be notably darker than circle number four, but not black. might look black on, like I said, on the video here. But in person, as you are looking at it, it should not look black. It should look dark blue. Okay, and you might need a second coat on that as well. So once it dries, put, oops, put on a second coat. Okay, that's our monochromatic color scheme. Pretty cool. We're going to be using this in a painting. Um, monochromatic color schemes uh, to show atmospheric perspective. So we'll talk a little bit about atmospheric perspective, but that is the video for today. So thanks guys for being here. If you are watching this on YouTube and you are not in my high school classes, I would love your subscription. If you can, click the like and subscribe button down below this video. I would be so grateful. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.